Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second global Oncothon organized by Onco Daily and uh, co-hosted by uh, with Sayok. This is the day that uh, is going to change the lives of a lot of children that are battling uh, cancer. So it is my great pleasure uh, to be the moderator of this session. I'm Shushan Osepian, a pediatric oncologist uh, and uh, editor-in-chief of Onco Daily Medical Journal. And uh, we have a very uh, exceptional uh, speakers uh, during this session. So I will try to introduce uh, all of them and then uh, everyone will have uh, five minutes, uh, five to ten minutes to discuss their perspective on uh, challenges how they face how they uh, are practicing and uh, what uh, solutions they find uh, in uh, childhood cancer so uh, please welcome professor uh, Ching uh, Dian Peng who is uh, the professor at China Medical University uh, Children's Hospital and past president uh, of Taiwan Society on uh, thrombosis and hemostasis and also we have with us today uh, Dr. Akiro Yoneda from Japan, who is the Director of Children's Cancer Center, National Center for Child Health and Development, uh, and President of the Japanese Society of Pediatric Hematology and Oncology. So welcome uh, both uh, on uh, second Global Oncothon. Uh, happy to hear your perspectives. Uh, uh, first, uh, let's start uh, with Professor Peng. Yes, uh, <clears throat> the chairman, dear chairman, uh, as Kim, as guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good day. I'm Dr. Jin Tianpeng, a professor of hematology and oncology at China Medical University Children's Hospital in Kaichung, Taiwan. For over three decades, I have dedicated my career to advance in pediatric oncology. And I am honored to serve on the board of the Thai, Taiwan Childhood Cancer Foundation. It is a privilege to join you today at the second Global Encore Song, a 24-hour worldwide initiative on International Childhood Cancer Awareness Day dedicated to pediatric on cancer research and given heart to children and the families around the world. This actual event hosted by Uncle Daily in cooperation with the International Society of uh, Pediatric Oncology brings together leaders in healthcare policy makers, uh, these such as celebrities, uh, patients and uh, survivors, all united in the shared mission to improve the lives of children uh, battling cancer. Pediatric cancer is a uh, devastating re reality, but together to, we have the power to change outcomes. This year, we are raising crucial funds to support innovative clinical trials and uh, this such aimed at improving survival rates for children facing high risk and uh, the large cancers. Every contribu contribution makes an impact. I urge each of you to visit REM Fund or ORG, back ORG and uh, join us in this global effort to bring life-saving treatment uh, to children who need them most. I would also like to express my half-based thank gratitude uh, to Professor Tamamiya for inviting me to be part of this important initiative once again. The Childhood Cancer Foundation of Taiwan, a commitment to, to care. Let me begin by sharing the mission of the Taiwan Childhood Cancer Foundation since 1982. 
we have been committed to supporting children uh, with cancer and their families, uh, raising awareness and uh, improving uh, us access to advanced treatments. Our effort have significantly improved survival rates, increasing the cure rate from 60% to nearly 90%. However, 10% of children still face treatment resistance and the relapsed cancers, and we must do more to ensure no child is left behind. Through initiatives like National Cancer Databases, a patient support, support groups, and uh, advanced research collaborations, we continue to fight for better outcomes and uh, a future free from childhood cancer. The future of the pediatric cancer treatment, precision medicine, one of the most promising uh, advancements in pediatric uh, oncology today is precision medicine. At the China Medical University Children's Hospital in Taiwan, we are pioneering genomic profiling and the targeted therapy to provide personalized treatment for children with high-risk relapse or refractory cancers. By analyzing molecular and the genetic data, we have identified and targeted specific cancer vulnerability, offering a more effective, tailored uh, approach treatment. This innovative strategy holds immense potential to improve survival rates and the quality of life for children who previously had the limited treatment option. A call to action join the fight against uh, childhood cancer. This second global encore song is more than an event. It is a movement, a movement where we unite as a global community to ensure that every time, regardless of their circumstances, has assessed life, life-saving care. I urge you to join us in this mission, whether through donation, advocacy, or spreading awareness, your support can help bring help, hope and healing to children worldwide. <clears throat> Together, we can turn the tide against the childhood cancer. Together, we can make history. Thank you for being part of this global movement. It's motivational, and thank you for uh, encouraging people to uh, donate. Uh, that uh, and uh, I, I myself uh, will uh, challenge three of my friends uh, to donate ten dollars, but uh, with the condition that they are going to challenge uh, three other friends, so that we will uh, build the chain. So now I would like to introduce Professor Yoneda. Uh, my the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, dear friends all over the world. My name is Akihiro Yoneda. I work as a pediatric surgeon specializing in pediatric cancer at the National Center for Child Health and Development and also National Cancer Center Hospital in Tokyo, Japan. Additionally, I have been appointed as the president of the Japanese Society of Pediatric Hematology and Oncology, JSPHO. I am very honored to be able to participate in the second global Oncoton today. Thank you, Professor Tamamian, for giving me the opportunity. The Japanese Society, JSPHO, is an academic non-profit organization formed in 2011 as a merger of two previous organizations the Japanese Society of 
pediatric hematology established in 2050 and uh, sorry in 1960 and the Japanese Society of Pediatric Oncology established in 1985. Our academic society aims to support the smiles of children and their families by bringing together experts from various fields such as pediatric oncologists, surgeons, radiologists, pathologists, nurses, and other professionals. Under the keywords of pediatric hematology and oncology disease, and conducting academic activities such as organizing academic conferences, workshops, and lecture meetings, the, public, the publication of journals and research articles, conducting research, development of acquisition criteria of specialist physicians and the field of pediatric hematology and oncology, collaborative activity with relevant organizations in Japan and abroad, especially with the Japan Children's Cancer Group, JCCG, the Asian Pediatric Hematology and Oncology Group, AFO, and, of course, SIOP Asia. And also, our society holds jo a joint symposium with Korean Pediatric Hematology and Oncology every year. Similarly, we aim to expand exchanges with academic societies in other countries, mainly in Asia. Last year, we hosted SIOP Asia in Yokohama, Japan. The president was Dr. Kimikazu Matsumoto, who is the chair of the Pediatric Cancer Center in my hospital, also coordinates core hospitals of pediatric cancer in Japan. There were more than 700 participants from more than 40 countries all over the world. The participants including doctors, nurses, other supporters, as well as patients and their families were able to discuss childhood cancer very eagerly. We were very honored to have this opportunity, and I would like to thank again all the participants, SIOP Asia. I have spent several times in Southeast Asian countries, such as Vietnam and Cambodia, to visit local children's hospitals with my Japanese colleagues for pediatric cancer treatment support. I was heartbroken to see so many children and their families being treated in the hospital, overflowing from hospital rooms and spread out on mattress in the hallways. Appropriate testing is not available in these countries, and international standards for diagnosis and risk classification are often not available. As treatments are limited due to a lack of therapeutic drugs and radiotherapy equipment, so surgical treatment becomes more important in these countries. After the coronavirus pandemic, I regularly participate in international conferences on childhood cancer online. We hold cases, case conferences every two weeks with Hue Central Hospital in Vietnam and Japan Heart Hospital in Cambodia. I also attend an international neuroblastoma conference called Global Neuroblastoma Network, GNN, every week. Here, experts from North America, Europe, Japan, and other developed countries will provide treatment advice for cases in low- and middle-income countries. We believe those efforts can improve treatment outcomes for childhood cancer in low- and middle-income countries and hope to contribute to WHO GICC's goal of raising the survival rate of children with cancer to 60% by 2030. To make this movement more active, we'd be grateful if we could receive the support of kind-hearted people around the world. I do hope your warm support will bring happiness to all children and families suffering from childhood cancer. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you so much, Professor Yonera. Uh, I had a question uh, regarding, um, uh, uh, the question is uh, for both of you. Uh, what are the main challenges that you face in your region currently? And you think that, uh, and how you think that we can uh, find the solutions for that? Just one challenge that is the burning challenge for your daily work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can start. Question. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, as I said, the uh, uh, web conference is a very powerful tool to improve the uh, treatment results in low and middle income countries. So I would like to you know, have uh, more uh, opportunities to those uh, conferences in future. Thank you. I see. Thank you very much. And what about Professor Peng? What do you think? What is the most important challenge that you face right now in Taiwan? Uh, Professor Peng, you are muted. I mean, in Taiwan, all, all of the uh, expense are for the for the treatment the cancer type cancer are covered by the national insurance agency of Taiwan. So the most uh that that kind of the uh, challenge is needed to regulated by the NIHC of Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for being with us today. Um, it's a great honor for us to have you during our second Global Oncothon. Uh, I wish uh, that uh, you um, also try to challenge uh, your environment, uh, friends. And so let's uh, make this um, event uh, as a movement, as Princess uh, Dina mentioned. And uh, thank you very much. This is the closure of the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.